if you will, I'll, I'll give you a little story about my my first um, when I was first an intern at a, a Madison Avenue um, ad agency, uh, fifth largest in the world uh, at that time, and for six months I was just you know shut up and listen, Alan. And then finally, I got I got the um, the go ahead to go ahead and do something on my own. I was given an assignment to write about two hundred and fifty to two hundred fifty words on a dog food, and I didn't never had a dog. I didn't know anything, but they give you a brief and you go through it. And the guy says, "I want it in two days." I said, "Okay, boss." I took it home over the weekend. I worked it. I threw it out. I worked it. Threw it out. I worked it. Threw it out. I worked it. Threw it out. Finally, something hit me. I started writing, just fell into place, brought it in on Monday, handed him, said, Steve, here it is. And he says, thank you, tucked it under his arm. Well, hey, aren't you going to read it? He said, no, not now. I'll get back to you. Well, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You know, finally, the next Monday, he gives it to me. He says, okay. Here it is. I said, did you read it? He said, of course I read it. I read it five times. My wife read it four times. Yes. What'd you think? He says, we thought it was one of the most humorous treatments of dog food we've ever seen from any copywriter. I said, we're going to run it? I said, my head was exploding in great vanity. And he said, uh, no, it sucks. I said, what? He says, yeah, I, I hate to tell you, but I gave it, see, I have a master's degree and my wife has a PhD. We understood everything, every nuance, everything you said. It was hilarious. I gave it to my 11-year-old daughter and she didn't understand a thing you said. Now you rewrite that until she does. My first lesson, the average copywriting target is a fairly bright fifth grader. And that's the way you write, unless you're writing to lawyers or or doctors or something like that. In which case, it's it's a, a lower age than that. Mm -hmm. And so, <laughs> yeah, that that's what that's what they teach, and that is absolutely true. Some of us get so full of ourselves that we want to show how prolix we are. You can go look up prolix in the dictionary, Larry. You know, uh, Phil. I keep thinking you look like Larry King. So, but anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can look it up in the dictionary, it simply means uh, having a large vocabulary or being verbose. And we don't want to be that. We want to have every single word as simple and understandable as possible.